In this episode's cornucopia of wonder and excellence, I put some offcuts of steel with some nuts and bolts attached in a couple of pots full of water. Okay, I understand that's a pretty good start to a video, but you can thank me in the comments and by helping support my channel, but in the manner of a true audience retention trickster, I'll hold off telling you why I put metal in buckets until the end. In the meantime, you're going to watch me, along with a couple of other tasks, putting a lid on a box. Dedicated fans of Alan the Lifeboat will have seen me construct the two halves of the engine cowling in episode 10. The original cowling doubled up as seating and was vast, wasting lots of precious cabin space. The cowling already has rigid glass fibre sides and now needs a lid, and this lid needs to be so strong that I can stand on it. Rather than build complex curves into the shape of the structure as an anti-injury precaution for rough seas or careless crew members, I want to keep the structure square for simple assembly and best use of space, and later I'll show you in an upcoming sea trials preparation episode how safety will be assured. Front and back of the cowling is set to be a semi-flexible insulated pair of panels, but let's make the top lid first. To get the dimensions absolutely perfect, I need to combine the cowling halves and set it in place. In order to do the nuts and bolts at the front end, I need to shuffle the structure back a few inches. To do that, I need to remove the raised walkway cover that I made from scrap fiberglass last year. This isn't ideal, but can be solved in future by reversing the direction of the nuts and bolts holding the frame together. It also gives me a chance to start correcting one of my most heinous vibrational crimes. I'm changing these over for Nordlocks because they're nearest the engine, so I want to minimize vibrations around there. Uh, Take the advice that spring washers and vibrations do not mix. There we go. Cowling in place and I'm pretty chuffed with most of it. The reflective coated sound dulling interior will be brilliant for both safety and ease of minor inspections. And although I indented a section of the insulation so there's clearance from the exhaust pipe lagging, I didn't extend this quite far enough. So there's only an inch of clearance in one area. I'll run the engine for a bit and use a laser heat meter to see if there's a need to make that indent larger. Although I've completed the structure of the engine cowling, it now needs to have a lid. And I'm going to actually divide that lid up into four areas so I can remove certain panels without having to take the entire top off the cowling. So just say if I needed to get to a small part of the engine to check something or even to replace something, it means I don't have to completely deconstruct the entire top of the cowling. So it's going to be in four different parts. And I've already laid up a couple of these. Um, here is one. There we are. Um, this is one panel I've already done and I, it's got a, a brother panel over there. I'm now about to do the second, uh, sorry, the, the, the third and the fourth panels which complete uh, the rear section of the, of the cowling lid. Now what I've decided to do with this one is to do a carbon fibre and glass layup. The reason being is I want a little bit of extra stiffness from the, from the carbon uh, and a little bit of extra tensile strength because uh, there may well be some areas where you might want to stand on this part of the cowling. Uh, apologies if there's a bit of a noise now because someone's running their crane outside and it's really noisy. Anyhow, I'm going to sandwich together the carbon fibre and the glass fibre so we get a combination of the two characteristics. Now you may well be saying to me, hold on, why on earth are you using carbon? Uh, the answer is, is because this was extremely good value. Uh, this is 1200 GSM and if you look at the characteristics of carbon versus glass and then take weight into account as well bearing in mind I want, might want to take off this uh, this lid and move it around and having it weighing a ton is not going to be particularly helpful you do get the best combination of strength and uh, and lightness from using this uh, this fabric here it's not a bank buster as I said because I managed to get a really good deal on this really thick heavy duty carbon fiber uh, normally with boats you go for glass fiber because glass fiber is strong but it's very dense and so if weight is not an issue Normally you just go for, cut for glass fibre because it's cheaper. I'm going to be laying it up using polyester resin and that may surprise a few of you because normally you associate using carbon fibre with epoxy resin which is the highest performance resin but again it's just a budgeting issue. It would cost many times the amount of money to set this up with, uh, with epoxy resin and I don't need that final extra percentage points in performance out of this, out of this lid for the cowling. Anyway, let's get on with it. Methods like prepreg or infusion can give you the lightest possible end result without compromising performance. This is because you want just enough resin to fully wet out the fabric and absolutely no more, unless you're adding gel coats, flow coats, textured surfaces and so on. In fact, lots of excess resin can weaken a finished part. You can also use a vacuum to help, but with sheets for use on a boat, I've gone for the simplicity. 
a wet layup and plenty of heavy items to plonk on top during the curing process. The first job is to cut the fabric roughly to size. I've made the mistake in the past of being too stingy, not wanting to waste valuable materials, and then end up having to make cuts where the fabric ends prematurely, so I try and make sure there's a few inches of overrun. I recall some saber rattling in the comments in a previous video involving fiberglass, and I have a shootout between different types of it coming up in future weeks. There's no mould as such, but I need to prepare the surface properly before getting any resin involved. I have two thin sheets of polypropylene plastic. Huge glass sheets would be better, and work similarly as a non-stick surface as the floppier plastic, but there's a massive difference in price and weight. Any contamination or old flakes of resin will affect the cure and the finish, so a combination of chipping away old residue and then a wipe down with acetone preps the surface perfectly. I'm mixing up the polyester resin with an accelerated MEKP catalyst at 2%, so I decided to make three batches so as not to end up rushed and risking the chance of the resin gelling before I'd finished. I can be fairly liberal with the first load, as any excess will soak into a second layer in the sandwich once rolled and compressed. The three layers stack up quite easily, and I'm trying to limit any air trapped, as rolling and pressing air pockets out can be a pain. The glass fibre drinks up resin more easily than the carbon, but all you need to ensure is a full wet out of the fabric without going overboard. That's pretty much it. I do have a few pneumatic presses that apply pressure between the boat's upper shell and the worktop, but in this instance I'm happy to use the top sheet of polypropylene, some flat boards and then a load of heavy cans and old lead batteries. Once cured overnight, the composite sections of the lid obviously have messy edges. I use the set square to get a reliable angle for where the sections intersect in the middle, but beyond that I wanted to mark up the cut lines on the cowling itself. I could take measurements, but then it would be daft to allow any small errors to give me a badly fitting lid. So, a sharpie run along the lid surface using the cowling as a guide was spot on. One of you lot shamed me for having a Black & Decker jigsaw, so I purposely dug it out of my tool chest and have engaged this in spectacular fashion here. I find jigsaws can make a bit of a mess of thicker composites, but using a fine toothed metal bit and plenty of patience, it all worked out fine. Then I needed to sand down the surface. Polypropylene release surfaces give a medium gloss to the part, but on one side, the inside of the lid, I needed to remove this gloss and provide a key for sound absorption foam to stick to. I could have used peel ply, a nylon sheet that leaves a texture in the resin surface, but it seemed wasteful as peel ply is single use. I also sanded the upper side to provide a key for a little bit more resin. I wasn't totally happy with the finish from my layup, with a few inevitable pinholes in the resin, but also a couple of zones that were wetted out enough to give the sheet full strength, but an imperfect resin surface. The cowling lid will be a working surface for the crew, so it's worth getting it right. Now for a brief intermission from the joys of making a lid. Before I put the brand new cowling over the engine, I want to make sure that it's as clean as it can possibly be because over the years, you know, with a little bit of an oil spill here, a bit of a bit of diesel getting here, there and everywhere, it gets a bit sticky, particularly in all the nooks and crannies, and that picks up dust and dirt and all sorts of other things. And also some of the paint, which was now, it's well over a decade old, even though the engine hasn't been used very much, it started to flake off. So I've got rid of all of the, what I would call fragile paint. Uh, primed and painted that and now I'm just going to get down into behind um, some of the structures that you would not normally be able to get access to particularly once the cowling's back back on and I'm going to use my secret weapon for that for that job which is a pipe cleaner because this means I can without damaging anything without uh, there's a few there's a few small copper pipes for instance which I really don't want to bash around too much in case they break they're custom made and it would be a nightmare to have to have them uh, sent over from uh, the factory brand new at some crazy price or, or custom made. So I'm just going to very gently get in there with this and a little bit of, uh, a bit of degreaser to make sure that the engine is completely ready to be shut into the new, its new home and uh, ready to power Alan along. Once I've done all this I'll give it a blow through with some compressed air and then hoover out all of the detritus which is collecting down in the bottom of the engine bay. I bet you enjoyed that. Having cut and sanded the lid sections, I could position them carefully on the cowling frame and then sand back any tiny parts so that the edges sit flush. Although I'm going to be making a more elegant fixing method that will be hidden under the magic edge safety protectors, I've decided to quickly screw down the sections into the cowling top for now. It means that these are already marked up for when I put in a better upgrades later. There we go. Functionally complete and more than strong enough to stand on, but there's a little bit more work to do 
One final stage I'm going to do here before I do a matching paint job is to fill in some of the small pinholes and the other ugly bits with a mixture of an epoxy resin, so it sticks nicely and uh, gets into all the nooks, nooks and crannies, uh, with some silica powder, which makes it more of a, almost like a fairing compound. So I'll be able to uh, spread it nicely into all of the little gaps to get a nice uh, smooth finish. And then I'll do a final sand job over the top to key for paint. This is a coating epoxy resin that doesn't need to be covered in order to cure fully. Silica powder is a pretty common thickener for resins. I'm giving the epoxy a really good stir all the way to the corners before I pour it out onto this slate here. And so I can add the silica and turn it into a paste. Almost more by luck than judgment, I've got the consistency perfect straight away. So that was three capfuls of silica uh, powder straight into the, straight into a, about a hundred and, it was 140 grams of resin. And it's given me a nice gloopy paste. I'm being a bit blasé about the thin paste that I've made at first, covering all the areas needing more flatness in their life, and then by the time I noticed the first signs of gelling, made sure the surface was reasonable. Leaving ridges only means more sanding later on. The resin's starting to slightly gel, so I need to speed up, but I'm, I'm nearly done. It's just starting to thicken very slightly. I promise to show you how this lid, and indeed the finished cowling with fixings to the floor, and the front and back, turn out. It needs to be ready for sea trials in just three weeks, the video for which you all will have already mentally noted as the high point for each of your months of May. Right, you all saw my labelling on the intro to Electrics episode. Here's the machine hard at work. I wanted this organiser as the inside of Allen can easily descend into apocalyptic chaos, and of course all slots needed their own label. Excellent use of time. And finally, I've had you sitting through a video of me making a flat sheet of material, all so you can catch the tantalising reveal about why I have metal in pots of water. Well, it's to see for myself how galvanic corrosion occurs in the real world. This is when connected to similar metals end up in a wet or humid environment, a voltage is created, and the least noble metal will corrode sacrificially. Here I have two steel parts, one hop dip galvanised with a thick layer of zinc, and the other just lightly zinc plated. I've run stainless steel bolts through both. This should create a galvanic cell and cause the zinc to corrode, and once gone, the mild steel next. Salt in water massively accelerates the process, but I started with tap water. After a month, I couldn't really see much change. Even the cut ends of the galv steel hasn't begun to rust. So I swapped it over for seawater from the creek. After another month, this is what's happened. The galv appears almost unchanged, although the ends have blackened. Anyone know why? But some zones of the zinc-plated bracket have started to discolour, which I assume is the zinc beginning to corrode. I was surprised at how slow this was, especially since submergence in salt water is the best way to get maximum galvanic corrosion. Something to ponder over the coming weeks. Don't let it dominate your time too much. Cheers to those supporting my channel via the link in the description, buying t-shirts and hats, and buying my books. You're all on a path to greatness and enlightenment. Bye.